Well, it's very important that blood pressure is controlled. If the blood pressure goes too high, this is called hypertension, high blood pressure. If the blood pressure goes too low, this is called hypotension, low blood pressure. And both of these are abnormal states. And they're problematic because both of these conditions can lead to damage to the tissues of the body. Now, if we think about hypertension first, that can cause disease of the large arteries, a condition called atherosclerosis, where fatty material accumulates within the lumen of the artery, underneath the tunica intima. Fatty material called atheroma develops, causing atheromatous plaques. That disease process is called atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis formation is greatly accelerated if there is high blood pressure, if there is hypertension. And high blood pressure can also cause disease in the small arteries. It can cause hardening of the wall of the small arteries and indeed the arterioles. And that's called arterial sclerosis hardening. Arterial sclerosis is the hardening. The atherosclerosis is the accumulation of the atheroma. And this makes cerebrovascular disease more likely, like strokes. It makes cardiovascular disease more likely, like angina and heart attacks. And it also makes peripheral vascular disease more likely as well. Bad circulation to the legs and feet. High blood pressure can also lead to a thickening of the wall of the heart. The myocardium becomes thicker. It hypertrophies. It causes the left ventricular hypertrophy. And over time, that will lead to congestive cardiac failure. High blood pressure can also damage the kidneys. It can damage the retina of the eye. So high blood pressure can damage many tissues. So it's important that the blood pressure doesn't go too high. But conversely, if the blood pressure is too low in an acute situation, that's going to cause hypoperfusion of the tissues of the body, not enough blood getting through to the tissues of the body. And that means not enough oxygen is going to get through. And it also means that the waste products are going to accumulate, causing damage to the tissues. This state of severe acute hypotension we would call shock. And that can damage the tissues in a relatively short period of time, maybe around about an hour. This is where we get the idea of the golden hour. We have an hour of opportunity to treat very low blood pressure. So very low blood pressure can cause damage to the tissues in about an hour. But the process where hypertension causes damage to the tissues, as we've described, can take place over many years. It's a more chronic ongoing condition. But the bottom line is we don't want the blood pressure to be too low. We don't want it to be too high. I mean, if the blood pressure is too low, you won't be able to perfuse your brain. And then when you stand up, the blood will run down from your brain and that will make you faint. You can have an acute cerebral hypoperfusion. We normally call that a faint because there's not enough blood pressure to perfuse the brain. So we need homeostatic regulation of blood pressure. We don't want hypertension. We don't want hypotension. We want it to be just right. So how is this achieved? Well, the first mechanism we want to look at, the story starts with the kidney. We've seen in a previous podcast that the kidney is able to detect the levels of oxygen in the blood going through it. But the kidney is also able to detect the pressure of the blood going through the kidney particularly in the area of the afferent arteriole. It's able to detect the pressure in the blood going through the arterial system in the kidneys. Now, the ball of capillaries in the Bowman's capsule is called the glomerulus. And juxta means beside. So just beside the glomerulus, in the area of the afferent arteriole, there is the juxta glomerular apparatus. And when the blood pressure drops, when the pressure of the blood going through the afferent arteriole is less, that will be detected and the juxta glomerular apparatus responds by producing an enzyme called renin. And that's renin with one N, R-E-N-I-N. 
Now the next bit is a bit complicated, so if you've got a white physiology book, do turn to page 233 where there's a diagram that might help your understanding. So the blood pressure in the afferent arterial drops. That's detected by specialised cells in the wall of the afferent arteriole and the juxta glomerular apparatus will secrete renin. That's the first part of the story. Now, floating around in the blood, doing not very much, in fact doing basically nothing, is a small peptide called angiotensinogen. It's a small peptide or a small protein unit and it's produced by the liver and it circulates around in the blood and really doesn't do very much. It just circulates around all day. But when the angiotensinogen is acted on by renin, the renin, because it's an enzyme, converts the angiotensinogen into another molecule called angiotensin type 1. And this angiotensin type 1 will then circulate around the body. And angiotensin type 1 is a little bit vasoconstricting. It will close down the blood vessels. And if it closes down the blood vessels, that's going to increase peripheral resistance. And that's going to increase blood pressure a little bit. Because blood pressure equals cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance. So that will increase the blood pressure a little bit. Also, the angiotensin type 1 will increase the amount of aldosterone which is released by the adrenal glands. And if there's more aldosterone, that will retain more salt in the body. So the more aldosterone there is, the more salt, the more sodium chloride will be retained in the body. And because salt is an osmotic molecule, it sucks water to it. So if there's more aldosterone, there's going to be more salt in the blood, that's going to suck more water into the blood. And if there's more water into the blood, that will increase the total volume of the blood. It will increase the overall intravascular volume. And if there's a greater volume of the blood, that will increase the blood pressure. Because if there's a greater volume of the blood, there's going to be more blood going back to the heart, Therefore, the heart is obliged to pump more blood out. That will increase cardiac output. And as we've already seen, that will increase blood pressure because blood pressure equals cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance. But angiotensin type 1 only does that a little bit. So angiotensin type 1 only increases blood pressure a little bit. But when the angiotensin type 1 is going through the lungs, there's an enzyme in the lungs called ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. And this angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin type 1 into angiotensin type 2. So this means there's now angiotensin type 2 circulating in the blood. And you might have come across a group of drugs called angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. These drugs inhibit the action of angiotensin converting enzyme, meaning that the angiotensin type 1 is no longer efficiently converted into angiotensin type 2. But in the physiological situation, the angiotensin converting enzyme converts the angiotensin type 1 into angiotensin type 2. And angiotensin Type 2 is a very, very potent vasoconstrictor. It greatly vasoconstricts the blood vessels. This means it greatly increases peripheral resistance. This means it significantly increases blood pressure. And as well as being a vasoconstrictor, angiotensin type 2 greatly stimulates the secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, from the outside part of the adrenal gland. This means there's lots more aldosterone in the blood. This means that a lot more salt is reabsorbed from the renal tubules back into the blood. So the salt is retained in the body. The salt is osmotic. It attracts water and that's going to increase the total volume of the blood, which is also going to increase blood pressure because it's going to increase cardiac output. So the more angiotensin type 2, the higher the blood pressure is going to be. 
So if the blood pressure is increased, that means the blood pressure in the renal arteries is going to be increased. That's detected in the afferent arterioles and the afferent arterioles detect the increase in blood pressure and send messages to the juxta glomerular apparatus telling it to secrete less renin. So when the blood pressure is higher, less renin is secreted. If less renin is secreted, then less inactive angiotensinogen is going to be converted into angiotensin type 1. If there's less angiotensin type 1, there's less angiotensin type 1 to be converted into angiotensin type 2. So you're going to get less vasoconstriction and you're going to get lower levels of aldosterone, meaning the kidney can excrete more salt, meaning that the volume of the blood will be reduced. But then if, if the blood pressure goes down enough, that will be detected in the kidney as the blood pressure becomes lower and the kidney will respond by producing more renin. So this is called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system because it's regulating blood pressure by controlling the amount of renin which is released from the kidney. And the main cause of essential hypertension, people with high blood pressure for no obvious cause, is probably, almost certainly, that their kidneys are releasing too much renin. And if they're producing too much renin, too much angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin type 1. That's converted by ACE into angiotensin type 2. And these people are chronically hypertensive. And the first line treatment usually for hypertension is to give these ACE inhibiting drugs, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So less of the very vasoactive and aldosterone stimulating angiotensin type 2 is generated in the circulatory system and this allows the blood pressure to remain at relatively lower levels than it otherwise would. So in the normal situation the kidneys are detecting the pressure of the blood. When it rises they're producing less renin. When the blood pressure falls they're producing more renin. The renin has the effect of activating this angiotensin aldosterone system increasing blood pressure. When the blood pressure is increased that's also detected by the kidneys. The kidneys produce less renin and when the kidneys produce less renin the blood pressure is therefore allowed to fall. Well that gives us a bit to think about so I think we'll finish this podcast at this stage. At this stage.